Welcome to another edition of Vigorously with me, Val Klein Hands. Love this episode because it's going to be a lot of fun. I feel the energy already. Entertainer and plus size model Haley Herms is in the building. Haley, welcome. I am thrilled to have you. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm loving the energy too. It's great. <laughs> I'm feeling like we're going to bounce a lot off each other. I feel, I'm feeling it. I am. Let's start with tattoos because this is something that you and I have in common. You just added to your back piece. Love the design that you've got going on. It's the most important people in your life, I'm assuming, is kind of the theme that's going on there for it's anybody that hasn't seen it. Yeah, it's a little bit of inspiration. So right, so the idea is right now I have three portraits, but eventually I'd like my entire back, shoulders to like butt crack, covered in black and white portraits, in clouds with music notes, the whole thing. So right now I do have my mom and my grandma. They're both passed away. And then I also have Kurt Cobain. Um, you know, got that one when I was 18. It was the first one. And I was <laughs> like... And I still love it. I have no regrets. But so it eventually, it, it'll be people that inspired me, but also people I love and care about, but very meaningful people on my back. But I am definitely a tattoo girly. And with modeling, it's so hard because if I did not do commercial work, I would be like fully tatted. But I've like, okay. and you know, I'm giving myself a few more, a few more years of commercialism and then I'm just going to get yatted. <laughs> And I'm hopefully going to see myself walk down a Fendi runway, all tatted. Period. And we're just going to love that. Let's go. I love that. So I was wondering, you touched on some things that I was wondering about there too. First off, why are tattoos so damn addictive? Because I've got one. I've always wanted more. But then I look at my electric bill every month and I'm like, I would like to pay you. And oh, I do. Definitely. I look at my back and I'm like, wow, that's like my rent. That's like a couple months <laughs> rent sitting there just like cute and I can't even see it people think I'm crazy but I'm like I can feel it like I know it's there it's in pictures but they're just like I think it's kind of healing like I don't know if it's just like the need like and I don't like needles like can't even look at a needle when my my blood gets drawn so I Neither. don't know what it is about tattoo specifically but I think part of it is that it's very healing yeah, you're telling a story, and usually it's connected to something that's meaningful. I mean, yes. for, even if it's a funny joke tattoo later, that it's gives you a laugh. Funny. Those are cool too. Yeah, I started getting tatted when I was like 13 or 14. My mom actually took me to get my first tattoo. Oh. And what's funny is like uh, when I when I was that so. 13, 14 tattoos, right? Great. 17, almost 18, I get my nose pierced without her knowing and at Venice Beach. And she thought it was fake, like just thought it was like one of my little rhinestones that I put on there. And then the like three days later, she finds out it's real and she just starts crying. And I was like, mom, I literally have tattoos on my body. And she's like, but tattoos are art and piercings are trash. And I was like, Whoa, interesting opinion. That's a hot exactly. take. Exactly. I thought that was very interesting. And I was like, okay. Like, you know, I respect it. Didn't see it that way. But when you say it, you know, kind of interesting. But my mom actually had me when she was older. So like when she was 40. So mm. she grew up, she was born in the 50s. So I kind of feel like maybe like tats were more like in than like piercings or something. Because she's very free spirit. So when the nose piercing thing happened, I thought she was going to be like, okay, eh, kind of quirky. Yeah. But it was a meltdown. It was a weird little meltdown. You might, you know, you might be onto something because I feel like if you're born in the fifties and then you grow up, I mean, by the time you're into the seventies and eighties, tattoos start to become a little bit more prevalent. And then by the nineties, they're full blown mainstream. 2000s, yeah, everybody and their mother has one. I piercings, feel like piercing your whole body was more like 90s, 2000s. You're getting where I was going. Yeah, that, I'm like, I think it's a relatively new, somewhat newer concept to see such a crazy amount of piercings. Yeah, on people. I mean, not that most people have a lot today, but like, it's just I feel like that that took hold a little bit later in life for her. So maybe yes. for her, it was like, give me a minute, I need to process this. Like, exactly exactly <laughs> i couldn't agree more 
No. I well, So the fact that you brought up the tattoos and modeling and how that may or may not impact your work, that was something I was curious about too, because you do, I mean, you do different types of modeling, you do different types of shoots. Does It doesn't really impact what you do at all, though, it sounds like, the fact that you're tatted. Yes and no. You'd be okay. surprised because most, so most of the tattoos that I have, I got before I was 18. Wild child. And, uh, but I did always like know I wanted to be in entertainment. Um, I grew up like child actress, performer, and then modeling came around like seventh, eighth grade. But by the time I was like 17 ish, I was like, oh, I want to like seriously pursue this, like dropped out of school, enrolled into independent study. Like I like was like focused, but it with saying that I have like hand tattoos, just like little dude did tidbits here and there have some arm stuff, but nothing crazy, like very hidden. Right. But a lot of auditions, they make you show your hands because they'll, they might want to do a hand close up. And especially okay. today, there's a lot of like copyright stuff. Apparently there's tattoo artists that are like suing companies. So like a year ago, I did a commercial for a company and I had to literally hunt down the man that was like tattooing me at 14 to get his signature on paper saying that he was okay with his tattoos being in a commercial and commercial work. Wow. So it was really dramatic. It That took like two weeks to do. Luckily he was alive and well. I was going to say you uh, found him. That's an achievement in itself. I found good old Joe. We love Joe. And like shout out <laughs> to Joe because I had a fake ID and I don't know if he knew or not. Probably not. But he was always the best. But so he was really nice. He's like, yeah, no problem. Like, and it worked out, right? But imagine like I couldn't find him and like didn't have like my crazy psycho detective skills. Um, then that could have been like a huge problem. And who knows what that would have done. And my agency would have probably been like pissed. But um, so it's things to consider about. And then like, I will say, I want to say like, 75 to 80 percent of the time they do edit my tattoos out and um I do think it's really cool when companies do leave them in there I'm like that's pretty hardcore I did this one campaign for Uma Beauty and it was in Nordstrom's and so when I can and it's still there and when I go to Nordstrom's and they they left my tattoo that says ride or die in and it's like right there and I I was shocked and I was like that's wow. Like, I was like, this, I know it's like first world problems, but I was like, this is so progressive in the modeling world. Like most brands would have never like not only left a tattoo there, but something that's just like kind of like provocative, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it was very interesting. So I do, I am mindful of that. And in modeling, it's just interesting because it's kind of like you have to either be like no tattoos are hidden or you have to go to like zero to 60, right? Like okay. it needs to be a quote unquote look. So like head to toe. And I do really want to get like the whole, like almost right side of my body tattooed. So that is something I am interested in, but I think I'm going to wait a few years, but it, it's going to happen. I'm, <laughs> it's going to happen. You're so everyone cool is prepared, you know? know. You're going to come up with some cool designs. I can see it now. Well, that, that's yes. interesting too. So it sounds like maybe, I mean, it's up to the brand's discretion and we know that that kind of goes without saying, but perhaps they left the ride or die on your hand because that was somewhat in line with their vibe as a brand, that cheeky kind of like. I think badass. so too. The okay. CEO, she, her name's Sharon. She is such a badass. She was there all day on set, very hands-on. And I could just like feel the energy in her. She's very like independent, strong woman. And like that, I think that definitely gives that vibe of like owning yourself and being true to who you are. So we love Oma Beauty. We do. I love it. Uh, I love a bunch of beauty brands. They're my favorite. Have you gotten to work with any that you were just like astounded when they gave you the call? <sighs> mm, I don't want to sound like, spoiled not I I want to say I have done multiple beauty ads I've done like Thrive Cosmetics Uma I've been in Morphe brush but like my dream if I'm being honest my dream dream is MAC Cosmetics so MAC yes. Cosmetics if you're watching this I just like growing up plus size I don't know if you can relate 
but like I grew up plus size. And so it's like, you didn't really have places to shop in the mall. And so no. I spent my time at the makeup counter and I just remember the, and I grew up in an abusive household. So being at the makeup counter and being able to create and express myself and the women were so nice and like, you know, sometimes they don't give you the time of day if you're not buying anything, this and that, but they were always so nice to me. And I just have the best, like fondest memories of MAC cosmetics and just being there as a, like a plus size girl and feeling accepted and being able to express myself. So I have done some amazing beauty ads and I will say Uma was probably the biggest one I've done so far. It was on billboards. It's in Ulta, Nordstrom's. It's across the pond in different countries. So I will say it's the biggest and that was surreal because I didn't know that it was going to go that far. I literally pulled up on Sunset Boulevard and I saw it and I was like, <gasps> and I just like skirt, pulled yes. over and like took pictures and I sent it to my agent was like, look, and they're like, um, you didn't get paid for this. So, uh, we're gonna, good for you. We're going to go send an email worked out. Everything worked out, but it was like a great thing that I saw it. Right. Um, but it was great. And then like, obviously going into like places that as a kid you spent time in and seeing it is like, so that that's just in itself a surreal moment. And, uh, but I would love for Mac cosmetic. I've, they've called me in like twice a year. So we're Ooh. close. They, okay. they, they're interested. They're watching. They're, watching. they're watching, but they haven't pulled the trigger. This is their sign. Pull the trigger, Mac. It'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> so in a place that you find solace, the beauty counter, the beauty stores, is that where the love of beauty and potentially modeling takes hold? Is that where it begins? Definitely for beauty, for sure, without a doubt. I think growing up, a lot of people thought like I was going to be a makeup artist and like do like in high school, I would do all my friends makeup for prom and dances and things like that. Or if we'd go out and but like I actually grew up like coming out of the womb with like a microphone was like, I'm going to be a singer like I, I'm I'm Britney. And so uh I was child performing everywhere. Then I want to say around fourth, fifth grade, we got into acting and that was a lot of fun. And I loved acting. And then coincidentally in seventh grade, I posted performance and acting photos to a MySpace and a photographer on MySpace, hashtag throwback. We're going to have another throwback at oh, yeah. contact me and was like, Ed Hardy, another throwback, uh, is, has like a plus size line, like let's shoot it. And I was like, amazing. Like, so little like 12 year old me goes up to my mom, like, Hey mom, like someone reached out to me online. They want me to come to their house. They oh, want God. me, to, they want me <laughs> yeah. to do their hair and makeup and like the whole thing. And my mom's just like, she was crazy enough to be like, okay, fuck it. And so we went and it, it ended up being legit. And I remember like just being on set and being like, this is so much better than acting because you don't have to memorize lines. Oh, I can okay. literally like the way my ADHD has been set up since birth. And it's like, I loved acting, but memorizing stuff was always a struggle. So I was like, and this is before social media, right? So you, we, with social media now, you have a lot of people doing things like because they want to show other people you can do it. Not necessarily because that's who they want to be, but like, I'm doing this. You might struggle with this, right? So at this time, no social media. This is like purely for me. I'm like, I feel like a chameleon. Mm. And then by high school, when social media became prevalent, I started posting and was like, oh, I'm inspiring people. Like people at my college would come up to me and be like, because of you, like I saw you wear a mesh dress with a black bodysuit. Yes. And I was shocked. And they're like, I wore a tank top for the first time in my life. Oh, and I was like, yes. shocked. And I was like, oh, I need to keep going. And so uh, it was just like very much like fuel to my fire. So that's how the, the modeling came about. But I'm just like, I, I didn't know how it was going to work out. Because again, this is at the time of like, we only have Lane Bryant and Torrid it. And it's not, Torrid isn't as we know it today. It was yeah, an yeah. extension of Hot Topic. So we're like giving like emo, like rock and roll, which I still love. I <laughs> exactly. Can't Letting a dance reincarnated across the screen from you. But yeah. <laughs> and I loved it. And yes, like, yeah. it, it, it was great for like seventh grade me. 
But like, I couldn't imagine if I was like 25 and that's what I had to wear at the time. So I like, so then we just started seeing expansion and then I was like seeing more and more hope that I could make modeling an actual career and not so much like a, oh, like I can have a gig here or maybe I might be like the fetishized like person on set or something like that. Like, you know, or at the time it was very much like plus size girls were only like pin up and like not commercial. So it's, I, I feel like I've seen the plus size industry before and after the internet. And it's very interesting to see its growth and its, its encounters with different things in social media. So it's an right. interesting world. Do you feel like we still have a lot of work to do when it comes to our plus size baddies taken care of in the fashion industry and in the clothing industry? Because I talk to my friends. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm a 14 right now, 14, 16. And I have plus size friends and they tell me that even today it's hard for them to access anything that can fit them outside of a Lane Bryant or a Tory that they can even like physically drive to or physically try on, which is important to them. So having that accessibility would be, immensely helpful but i'm just curious since you're kind of an insider are you seeing things trending that way do you think things are going to get better um yeah i think yeah overall yes i think things are going to get better and they do need to get better we've like i said i've seen it before and after the internet we've come a a long ways for Mm -hmm. sure without a doubt but the options like now we need to go deeper of like okay, well, we've come a long way in a sense of like, maybe we've added 10 to 15 brands, right? But out of those 15 brands, now we have like maybe Target added to like the mall mix where I can like go in person or maybe Forever 21. And I say maybe because A, I feel like a lot of experience with myself and plus size friends, you go to Target, all your sizes are sold out. because they're only online. Or they're only online. They're sold yeah. out or the or the really good, like chic, trendy stuff is only online. Yeah. And as we see, like the average American woman right now is actually a size 18. So it makes sense why all the extended sizes in person or online are sold out because that's the majority of the body that needs clothing. And um, but also at the same time, it's like you could maybe go to Forever 21. But even with that, you're going to have to call ahead hope someone answers the store and be like, do you carry it in size? Because only select stores carry the extended sizes. Mm -hmm. Um, And that goes the same with like jean companies and like all that good stuff where people are like, we have extended sizing and it's, it's, it's not. Do you though? (laughs) Yeah. It's an illusion. So it's like, now we have a little bit more options, but now I want like, For example, I feel like a majority, if you want to be trendy or hip, you have to shop fast fashion. And I don't like to support, you know, child labor and ethical practices and, or like, well, I do like to support ethical practices, but most of them are non-ethical. And so I, it's like, well, now what's my selection as a plus size girl who only wants to shop ethically? And it's kind of like, okay, so either you go to a secondhand store, which is great, but then you're going to still buy those unethical clothes, Mm -hmm. or you now only have like two options and it's probably going to be like pretty boho looking, like it's not like trendy and like, no, no hate to the boho like style, super cute. That's just not me. And so I feel like there's like a hard in between And you kind of have to like get what you can get. And that sucks to say. And it shouldn't have to be that way because if I was a smaller size, I could definitely just like be like, oh, I have 20 eco-friendly brands I can choose from. I have 30 different styles and like break that down further. So I'd like to see it A, more in stores, B, it. If we're going to go like a side step to that is if we're going to go in stores, I'd also like to like have the same exact options as mm. the straight size people. I'm mm-hmm. so tired of like the plus size section looking so differently. Getting and no it's moves. That's all we see. Floral. <laughs> like yeah. I'm like, if I see another floral dress, I'm going to die. Like, <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm just, mm, it's like, why don't I get the sexy stuff or the athletic athleisure wear like Mm, it's kind of like crazy so 
you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. But I definitely think we have a long way to go. And even though it's like better than it was 10 years ago, it's not it's not good enough. Yeah, I think there's still improvement to be had, too. And hopefully uh, you feel like you're acting as representation toward that cause. Like, like with every job you take, you're like, I'm putting my face on this. Let me get my face out more to yeah. say, hi, hi, we're here. Hello, this is the majority of America. Let's go. Exactly. And I'm very outspoken. So I'm not afraid to like, I don't want to say get my hands dirty, but like I would like to say, for example, I won't name the beauty brand, but a very large, well-known beauty brand had a content creator meeting and we were all sitting there and it was basically, they had the products for everyone to test out and the CEO was there and, you know, she's going around asking everyone's thoughts. She herself is a female and everyone around the table and she's asking everyone, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about our social media, our campaigns, this and that? And I feel like I was the only person to step up and give negative feedback and where I would say, I was like, look, like, I love the shade range. I love that you're using different models in terms of like the shade representation, gorgeous, flawless. I was like, but there's absolutely no plus size women and not even wow. like on the, the straight size end of like 14, 16, 12, like absolutely none. And to this day, I have still yet to see that company use a plus size woman. So... I will say I'm very mindful and that did not make me obviously want to like pursue a partnership with them and right. the, those kinds of things. So, you know, I'm not trying to stir shit when I'm on set, but it is nice when you can give feedback in like a safe way, constructively and That's brands actually listen. That's the difference when you're not just shit talking. And yeah. anybody can do that. <laughs> but if you have, if you have facts, if you have, learned experience behind that then there's some substance to it there's and i always words. like i never just say shit out of opinion i'm very statistical i'm yeah. very fact oriented i'm more of like a learn the rules so you can break them type of gal so <laughs> i like to know my shit before i just like dive in on something or someone I know. Another fact that I think interests both of us is the fact that way too many people are incarcerated for weed. I mean, we'll just we'll yes. just go there. We'll just say it. Absolutely. For, for the smallest, and I do think that there's change. There's legalization here now in Minnesota. I know there has been in California for some time already, but I, uh, I, I appreciate it's that you speak on this topic, and I notice that you do. Um, it's... Uh, it's a hard thing to do, and I was curious as your thoughts on what the impact has been being public about it and being public about what side of that argument you fall on. Has it impacted you at all, or maybe I, it's even benefited you? You know, I think there's a little bit of each. I There's people who like to say, you know, that, that weed is still this, like, schedule one harmful drug and then there's other people that are like well if you can't do xyz without weed then you're probably just a dope fiend and all there's like there's stigmas and there's level to it i'll right. be very honest i do i delete a lot of comments that are ignorant if there's comments that are actually curious and want to talk about it even if it's a little controversial no problem the ignorant stuff i delete more so just because I then see other people start attacking other people and I don't uh, like to yeah. have like negative energy. Like, you know, I love my followers. I love their support and I don't feel like they need to defend me. I'm like very confident with how I feel and think about things. But with saying that, I think as a cannabis content creator, as I, you know, that's what I talk about on my podcast as well. If you're benefiting or profiting off of the cannabis industry in any way, then I feel like you have a responsibility to also talk about the things that cannabis are quote unquote negatively affecting. And right now there's over yes. 40,000 people incarcerated for non-violent. You know, there are some violent things and there's mm -hmm. some play and that goes on a, like a smaller spectrum to an extreme spectrum, you know? And so the number is much larger, but just mm -hmm. for non-violent alone, we're talking 
40,000 plus people. And a lot of those people are people of color. And I feel like the right thing to do is obviously, you know, if we want to take it state by state, okay, it's super legalized out here. So why don't all the people who at, at minimum have non-violent charges, why aren't they released? Because this is something you can go walk to, drive to, you can yeah. do anywhere. Like, why aren't they released? And then on top of it, you know, you look at the numbers and you think, okay, because it's mostly people of color, I can't help but think with the other facts based around it, that is the motivation of keeping mm. those people incarcerated. And I know that's controversial to say, but again, we're looking at statistics here. We're looking at real numbers and it's yeah. important. And so I think some people are like, oh, I don't, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to be too controversial. I want to keep my sponsorships. And I just think you shouldn't be doing anything for money that you don't love. And if you're just smoking weed to get money, okay. But if you really love the plant and you're an advocate for its use and its healing properties and the benefits of it, then not only do you need to spread that message, but you need to also be saying, how can we get better? How can mm -hmm. we do better? Not only how can we lift up the cannabis industry, but how can we lift up the people of color in the industry and women in the industry? How can we make this playing field more even and for like everybody? Because if one person just goes up, it leaves us all the bottom. But if we all start working together, we all can go at the top. There's room for everyone at the top. It's just a matter of like saying the things that people don't want to say, you yeah. know? With your whole chest uh, so that everybody can hear it. I have I I've didn't think about the racial element, but that's a good point. I mean, because the only time I've seen it, like in my lifetime, it's it's involved white friends of mine and they're mm -hmm. possessing almost nothing. They're possessing a very small amount and they're going yeah. through thousands and thousands of dollars a day. They're going through, you know, endless uh, court dates and th it's just their life is just so complicated for something that truly didn't harm another human being. It didn't impact anybody else except them whatsoever. I I, I don't get the point. I don't get it's the point insane. in being so hard on it. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's definitely, I think, to a, like I said, the racial element, but it's also a cash grab. It's a way of, I think, America keeping the prison system going because mm -hmm. we have a lot of profit prisons that are for profit. And that's sad, especially, especially in middle America. So they're hoping people have like a half gram on them, you know, anything to just whip them into shape right and right. get that free labor um so you know I mean, that's, that's just my opinion and i'm just i'm looking at the numbers here no me too me too and and just basing it off what i've seen with my own eyes and if we pay a little bit more attention we'll see wait a second this is more prevalent than i think we're realizing because some people think the tab the, the subject is too taboo to even examine first off because it's yeah. like ooh, weed's a bad word and it's like um bet on all of your friends or somebody in your life has touched it at least once think and about it, think about it <laughs> and with social media today kids are like seeing it everywhere it's kind of like the new cigarette right like yeah. my mom smoked because her grandma smoked and oh, like well she's not dead so i'm gonna smoke and like right. people see their favorite celebrities and rappers and music videos and they're like oh they're smoking weed like i can do it you know, so no matter what the reason is that you're using it, it's 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 just like kind of crazy how vastly different it is depending where you want where you are. And I think it's just very interesting to look at like the the politics that go into mm -hmm. that specific place. One of my friends, she actually just got arrested in te Texas for a vape oh, pen. God. She had to fly back there. She's now on parole for a court case. And I'm like, I can't imagine spending all that money. Luckily, she has the money. But like having to be on parole in a different state you don't even live in for money any, anymore any, either. No, one, it's, I don't. It's insane. So then in turn, if you don't have the money, you do community service. So they right. get their free labor. Like, so, it's, you know. It's it's, it's, it's a cycle that needs to and I think we end it by talking about it and having that mm -hmm. transparency and like holding people accountable. And I hate to like sound like a cheesy like person, but it's like voting is important, especially Definitely this time. 
at, uh, like, you know, presidential elections are one thing. I, I think it's a hit or miss. I personally vote, but you know, there have been times when I didn't vote, but if there's anything I've noticed for things like cannabis, especially voting in the smaller elections in your community oh, yeah. is even more important for yes. especially like things like cannabis. And I urge people, if you don't vote, if there is someone that you, that you know that votes that like falls in the same alignment with your beliefs, I don't know if this is illegal to say or not, but give them your ballot, sign it, let them fill it out. And just the vote, the one vote will really count. I'm happy to say even a couple of my best friends who are in their thirties and forties who have never voted are now going to vote because- huh. You know, I spoke up. Okay, let's go. I, I mean, and f legalization and that issue aside, there's a million reasons to vote and pay attention to your state and local government. Honestly, so yes. many decisions day to day are made within those realms. Yes. It's worth paying attention to regardless. Before we wrap up, though, I want to give you a chance to plug anything and everything, anything you're excited about, the podcast, the modeling, go for it. What can we get excited for? Okay, I'll I'll give you a little a little bit of everything. You can find me on mostly all social medias at Haley Herms or Haley Herms Official. If you are an aspiring plus size model, I do one on one coaching consultations. You can find me on YouTube and TikTok and all that fun stuff. But I also have my website HaleyHerms.com where you can book one of those sessions. And I do sometimes have master classes every few months every few months for intensives. And then in terms of my podcast, I have Stoned and Horny podcast. We're on a hiatus now, but we're coming back this fall, winter with a big bang. And I'm really excited to relaunch that. Um, but yeah, I talk about how to enhance your knowledge in sex and cannabis, specifically for women um, and people that identify with a vagina. We are here for you. And we want to talk about all the things we talk about. Like I said, cannabis, dating, sex, it's the transparent place to be if you just can't, you don't have a friend you can talk to about it. So we love that. And I just love talking and chatting with people. So if you just want to follow me on social media, support, love, you know, talk about plus size, different things, beauty, fashion, style. I kind of have the whole lifestyle thing going on there. So I'm, I'm pretty quick to respond if you have questions about anything. And yeah, I just love being active with the people online. <laughs> I love it. And you've definitely piqued my interest with those topics. So I'm going to keep looking for the podcast and definitely excited for the return of that. Haley, thank you for thank your time. You. Thank you for chatting with me. Thank you for sharing everything. Thank you for having me. It was so much fun talking with you. I wish we could talk longer. You I know. So <laughs> I love, I feel like we're BFFs already. We can, we I can will do this again. Yes, I'm down. You just let me know. Yeah. <laughs>